that understands gratitude for what it has. And um, at the end of the day for me, many, many years ago, I, I moved from Newfoundland, Canada to Arizona. Um, yeah, I know, it's proof God has a sense of humor. So, <laughs> I grew up on an island surrounded by water and then I moved to a sea of beige. <laughs> and, uh, and I found myself in college, um, you know, obviously I, I got involved in youth ministry pretty quick. I'd been going, I'd been, I'd been in Arizona for a month and a half and I had a really strong conversion and started reinvestigating my Catholic faith and, um, and had a youth minister who believed in, believed in me, even though I was 19 years old, I wasn't really a teenager anymore. I was, I was, I was on the tail end of it, you know, the last few months of my teen years. And, uh, and in college, I started writing this song, um, kind of as a way, I think, to process in my faith. Like, I think really what it came down to is I understood that I needed to have a really human encounter with Jesus Christ. That, um, that, that my intellect, um, my love uh, for things like philosophy or, or history, or politics, those things at the end of the day, they weren't going to come for me and they weren't going to save me. And so I just turned to the Gospels and, and, and read what I read was very, very real human encounters. And then I turned to the church for answers. You know, and I, I tell people today, it's like, if you have questions about God, if you have questions about life and spirituality, to make a comparison, um, you wouldn't go to a plumber asking questions about rocket science. But sometimes when it comes to those things in our faith, we don't turn to the, the best authority. The church has had 2,000 years of experience dealing with every possible thing that you can think of. We turn, typically turn to the world. So I just turned to the scriptures. And what I saw was this man, Jesus, who was God. He's the only historical religious figure in the world who actually claimed, no, I am God. I mean, Buddha said a lot of amazing things, but he never said, I'm God. Confucius said amazing things, but he never said, I'm God. Um, and he has two billion followers and so either those people are all just completely lunatics and they bought into the, the biggest scam ever in human history or maybe there's something to this and so as a 19 year old, a 20 year old I just started reinvestigating my faith and I said what was it like to meet Jesus if I saw him would he look any differently I mean the Bible says he was a man of no reputation so maybe, you know, maybe I wouldn't be impressed with his looks so maybe looks aren't that important. And would, would my ears be open to really hear the things that he said? Because they were pretty controversial at the time. I mean, holding up a child who, at the time, wasn't really considered a, a, a real human being yet until they're an adult. But he holds up a child and says, this is what you got to look like if you want to inherit the kingdom of God. How would I respond to that? If I saw the people he picked, you know, fishermen, that can be pretty surly people. <laughs> And he chose fishermen, not Pharisees, to change the world. Would I be scandalized by that? These are all things I just started thinking about in college and saying, man, I want to I wanna have a real human encounter with that man who started a revolution 2,000 years ago. And 2,000 years later, he has a church of people who follow him and love him and have given their lives over the course of 2,000 years to preserve that truth. And, uh, so I guess this song was just kind of me thinking about all those things. And I started in college and I, and I finished it seven years later. Some songs take time. So. Like college, it took me seven years. So. I did have to leave the country. So that, that's a good excuse. But it's called Flesh and Bone.